Welcome to Motorsport Coaching, the podcast for racers with racers. Miss Motivate can help get you to the next level. Every episode, she talks to the best racers of today and those that can get you there. She'll help you get better. Racing new. At fitness, nutrition, sports psychology, sponsorship, social media, public relations, and media training. Connect with Miss Motivate at motivatetraining.com.au. That's M O T I V, the number eight, training.com.au. And now, to help get you to the next level, Miss Motivate herself, Belinda Risley. Hello, crew, and welcome to episode 140 of the Most Sport Coaching Podcast. I am your host, Belinda Risley, and thank you for joining me for this week's episode. We're going to be running through the top mistakes most sport athletes make when seeking sponsorship. We're going to be covering things around proposals, having plans or not having plans, um, who to contact, uh, what does or doesn't go into a package, as well as benefits and how to work out those. I hope you do enjoy it. This is going to be part one and then next week um, we're going to run out the other seven or eight points that we went through in our latest um, webinar that we did. Um, In there you heard that we will have some resources. So in today's um, podcast show notes, there will be the link to Leanne's um, marketing page as well as the list of all those benefits that we listed uh, so make sure you do race over to those show notes and get it and of course Tim if you are enjoying these episodes really appreciate if you can go over to your preferred platform that you listen to these podcasts on and rate and review the show to keep it listed up and high for others to benefit from our content again thank you for joining me for those who don't know me I'm Belinda Risley I'm the founder of Motivate Training and management. I'm a motorsport business coach and passionate about helping beginner to amateur motorsport competitors. However, I am also a mum of two racing boys. I've been born and bred into motorsport. I'm an athlete performance coach, obviously the host of the Motorsport Coaching Podcast. I am an FI Girls on Track champion and I love a sponsorship. So if you're looking to um, develop more knowledge and awareness around sponsorship, we do have a course online. It's eight weeks uh, covering the whole sponsorship process from research into actual sponsorship proposal development and sales techniques. Please race over to motivatetraining.com.au forward slash winning and check out our online eight-week course. However, if you're wanting something more specific, more tailored to you, if you'd like to be more coached through this process, I do offer VIP coaching packages. So if you're interested in some VIP coaching packages, I'll put that link in the show notes today as well. Um, I think it's just motivatetraining.com.au forward slash VIP but I'm not 100% sure. So make sure you do raise it over and check out the notes. Now, team, there are lots of golden nuggets in today's episode. So I do highly recommend that you listen to this either one when you are out walking, but if you are out walking, when you come back to actually grab your pen and paper and write down. Although I listed there's five kind of points that we're going to go through. Each of those points generally have anywhere between about three to eight different points within each of those subjects. So lots of tips. Hopefully you gain lots of it today. And again, if you do, please race over and write us a review to go into our monthly draw. All right, Tim, without any further ado, let's get on with today's show. And don't forget, next week, we'll have the other half of the webinar presentation and some more tips to get your sponsorship. So one of the biggest mistakes when it comes to seeking sponsorship is the content within the proposal is that a lot of the time, and I get them pretty much every single week, is that the content shouldn't be about you. It Oh, it's, so uh, it's not about your race achievements. It's, it is all good to put about your goals. But at the end of the day, this is a marketing opportunity. And again, for those that have been following me for a long time, I'm very big on that motorsport is a business. And so when it comes to seeking sponsorship, you need to treat it like a business. So um, we need to make sure that when we're 
doing this proposal, it is all about them, them being the sponsor or the prospect and exactly what we can offer them. And a little bit later, we're going to go into benefits and packages and pricing and things like that as well. But just some things here is like, don't use the words like should sponsor or donation let um, language or words like can you help me or assist or support because it sounds a little bit desperate but also um, if they get thousands and thousands of sponsorship proposals um, I mean organizations like Telstra uh, I'm talking about like fortune 500 companies that they could potentially just um, utilize the system which I know some of them do where they just scan through the proposals and if it has some of those keywords it will actually just withdraw and just throw to the junk um, those um, proposals so you want to ensure that when the, the language that you're speaking is aligned uh, with the prospect that you're talking to and as you can see language is noted down the bottom um, and so when I'm oh, just keep going on that point is that a language is roundabout when you're sending out a proposal it it also needs to be in that sponsor's tone of voice or um, their language. So basically, if they're really a, a fun, funky brand, you're wanting your proposal to be fun and funky. But maybe if you are going to a Fortune 500, you may want to put it a little bit more professional and, and change the wording a little bit and, and really like key on to, so um, hone in onto those key points that you are trying to offer and getting that a point across straight away. When you are doing a proposal team, please hesitate about putting their logo on it. Uh, at the moment, you don't actually have any relationship with them, so they can actually get you for trademarking breaches as well as doing a um, mock-up livery. Now, if they've asked for that, that's fine, um, but certainly don't go out of your way to do that in the first place and waste your money and time to get that done um, when it could be within a breach of their trademark, so just be careful of that. Uh, also, don't use lots of photos um, within the proposal. At the end of the day, they're really looking for the content. They're wanting to know what is your marketing offer and, and how can you help them get more business pretty much at the end of the day. So it's okay to have like one or two um, kind of photos. I, I recommend to have probably like one or two photos, like you're uh, definitely a photo of you in the flesh, no helmet, no sunnies, um, but also maybe one of the race team as well or one of like with you in front of your vehicle and or out on the track, um, but kind of limiting this. You really like to under four because you don't want it to be about the photos. You want to be around about the content and, again, the services that you can offer that um, sponsor. The other thing there is um, quite regular, often, sorry, we've been talking about adding demographics. And so those things about, um, sorry, I thought I'd turn it off. Um, those things, sorry, team, just go so unprofessional of things. Um, those things um, being um, around, you know, sex, gender, location, um, age, wherever they live, um, things that we can get off basically the social media insights. But now sponsors are looking for more around like what is your so so. so I can't even talk now. The psychographics of that. So what is that target market specifically? Um, within the course, we go into great details around what psychographics are. Thank you, I can now say it. And um, how you work that out. Um, but if you don't know, I highly recommend that you research a little bit more around about psychographics. And another thing, because it didn't fit on number one, is that don't write things around tax deduction within your proposal because Again, motorsport is a business and as you're doing business with a business, um, it is a business transaction. So it's always going to be tax deductible because it's a marketing um, activation or it's a marketing activity for the organization. So they can always write it off a tax anyway. Uh, number three, which is the big one, and um, as you can see at the beginning was failing to plan is plan to fail, is that no plans. I speak to um, athletes all the time and I go, that's fantastic. So can you show me your marketing plan? Can you show me your sales process or can you tell me your sales process? Can you advise me what your sponsor strategy is actually once you've engaged with that sponsor? So these are the three most important plans that you need to have. And again, it doesn't have to be pages and pages, but again, Motorsport is a business. So you need to have that marketing plan. I've got a one-page template, um, thanks to my friend Leanne DeFazio, which is a previous guest on the Motorsport Coaching Podcast. So I'm going to add her link um, on the goodies when I send them out and also her one-page marketing plan for you to access. And basically, you need to go through a SWOT analysis, so the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, uh, and also working more on that 
psychographics around about that target market um, that you want to attract or you want to work with. And that's going to help you identify what sponsors to attract with as well. Number two, uh, obviously within the, I think we've got a whole module dedicated to uh, what we do. We have a whole module dedicated to marketing with the Inside the Winning Sponsorship course. Um, so again, if you're wanting to learn some more information about that, um, hopefully you can join us within the course. Number two is around about the sales process. Okay, so once you've now spoken to somebody, what is your follow-up timelines? How long do you wait before you follow them up? Do you normally wait 24 hours? Do you wait 48 hours? Do you wait one week or two weeks? Do you have a sales page strategy where you've actually noted down, so the prospects, who their name is, and then when you've spoken to them, the date, what date have you actually advised them that you're going to follow up with them? Because that's all important because it's be part of your professionalism. It's them knowing exactly to expect your call and you and yourself being able to um, prioritize that time so that you can catch up with them um, and hopefully seal the deal. Um, but of course you need to have it all documented out. And these can just be dot points. They don't have to be absorbent um, pages um, of plans. Um, it's just like, what is your sales process? Once you've spoken to somebody, all the way through to closing that deal. Again, within the winning sponsorship course, we do have a sales module. Um, I think it's module six, and we're gonna go into more details around about that. All right, and then the third plan is actually that sponsorship strategy. So team, once you actually get a sponsor on board, what is your plan with them? How do you engage with them regarding their activations? How often do you contact them? When do you, when do you provide them with a sponsorship report around about? all of those wonderful things that we talked about, like the KPIs or the um, demographics that's now following you, all the social media posts that you've done for them, all of these kind of things should be within the report. Um, so there's the three plans that you really should have before you start seeking sponsorship. Number four, as you can see, it's a big one, packages. <sighs> How many times do I say no gold, silver or bronze, please? <laughs> um Look, there's pros and cons, obviously, having packages. Some people just don't want to think about it and they just want to, to offer something. Um, my personal opinion is that if you have a package, you potentially can market yourself out um, altogether of gaining a sponsor because maybe what you are offering um, could be like too high and outside of their budget or vice versa. Maybe something that you're offering could be too low and they actually had more scope to give you more money. It's okay, though, to have brands. So it kind of goes from gold, silver, bronze to, like, your principal partner to your major and to your supporting um, sponsors. Again, we go into more details within that winning sponsorship course around about how to identify those bands and what does each of those bands really mean. And you just got to remember with the packages that you're not selling the benefits, you're selling the marketing value. So, yes, benefits are really important because – Again, I think the next slide or the, the slide over is all around about benefits. But it's about, again, what can you offer? What is the marketing value? Motorsport is marketing opportunities, motorsport marketing. So sometimes you actually see um, things advertised being motorsport sponsorship and other times you might see it being advertised as motorsport marketing. Those two things are exactly the same thing. It's just the wording and generally the wording means different things in different parts of the world. Sorry, the same things, but okay, I should say different parts of the world uses different um, language. When it comes to packages, one of the biggest wins that you can actually have is offering multi-year deals. Um, it's a quick tip for you. Uh, so we, um, a lot of the times when I, again, are seeking sponsorship proposals or working with um, athletes, they're always like, oh, well, this year I need this much money. But ideally, you're wanting to race years and years ahead. So, And somebody to come actually on that journey with you and invest with you now and to continue on that journey with you in five years. So, yes, you need to map out that journey for them. But also, it's fantastic if you've got multi-year um, partners where you can possibly offer them a discount, first of all, or you can offer them a large sum up front. And then over the next three or five years, that that actual investment um, decreases. So there's two ways of offering that multi-year um, package. The other thing that I see miss out, and especially with the global, global economics at the moment, is that people don't offer payment options. All right, so making sure that you have an affiliation with some sort of payment system. So it's like PayPal or Stripe. 
um, where you can actually take payments for your sponsors to make that investment. So a great way um, for overcoming that sales objection of like I don't have that ten thousand dollars just sitting there now if that if you can go well actually we can do this per month every like the fifth of every month we can direct debit your account and we just set it up once there's no hassle to you once it's established it comes at the fifth of every month like wow how much more professional does that sound um to a sponsor than going all right well if you don't have 10 grand I'm not interested or or what you don't do to payment plans Again, it's just something small that could add, add a lot of value to your potential sponsor. And the other thing is that when you are seeking sponsorship away from the gold, silver and bronze option is that you need to know exactly what are your actual costs and expenses. So if you are going for smaller sponsors, which most of us are, if you know what your expenses are, it's easier to seek sponsorship to a local provider or in a national provider. If you're going, okay, well, look, I need based on the 15 events that we're going to be racing this year. Um, the entry fees, for example, are going to be $5,000. Um, I'm looking for an entry free sponsor of $5,000. So it's easy for the sponsor to relate to it, the actual investment. So make sure that you putting somewhere within that proposal, what exactly are they getting for their money? Okay, number five, as I said, benefits. Uh, when I seen these benefits, just ensure that when it's okay to have possibly like two or three generic benefits, but don't make it all generic. This is really what is important when it comes to um, proposal development, that, that you ensure that um, they are bespoke, so they're personalized to the prospect that you're trying to engage with. Number one, please don't just write logo on the car. Nobody wants that. They may excuse me, as a part of the package, but not specifically, that's why they're coming to invest with you just to see their sticker on the car. And hey, if you've got a sponsor like that, lucky you, pop it into the chat. I'd love to know about it. Again, when, th when you think about the benefits, you've got to think outside the square. You've got to think about what marketing opportunities um, can you actually offer this sponsor. You need to research your prospect and identify what did they need from this relationship, from this sponsorship um, there's different types of sponsorship. Again, in module one of the winning sponsorship course, we go through those different types of sponsorship, but you need to work out what did they want and how can you give them what they want? Um, at the end of the day, all sponsors want to increase their advocacy. So regardless if they're Fortune 500, they are still wanting fans to flock to their business, to flock to their website, to flock to their brands, to make that purchase or to be singing their song, to be brand loyal. Um, I do have a freebie of over 40 ideas. So again, when I send out the recording with the slides, um, I'll send out that 40 options of benefits. But really when it comes to the proposal development, that is the biggest thing you need to focus on is thinking outside of the squares to consider the marketing opportunities. Um, number six, who to contact. So again, that's always the biggest questions I get, Belinda, who do we contact? Um, the brand manager is always good. Um, the brand manager has money and has forecast and pretty much sits over the top of the sponsorship manager. And again, it's really dependent on the organization that you're trying to target. And hence why you need to research to know who is the right person within the organization that you are trying to contact. But the brand manager normally sits over the top of the sponsorship manager. They've got money, they've got focus. They know what, what's the head's objective, where they're going, what they're trying to achieve. So they are the person. If not, then try and contact a local regional manager because they can be a spokesperson to try and get up into a national level if you're wanting to um, get national sponsors. The marketing manager, again, they would generally have some more money and um, more better flexibility than what the actual sponsorship manager does. And then, of course, the general manager in those smaller business. But the most important thing is when you are contacting them is just to be unique. Um, like something like uh, Telsha, they get over 2,000 sponsorship proposals every month. So if you're just sending an email saying, hey, invest in me because I'm good, I can guarantee you, like I said, they've got the AOI system now. They would just bin it straight away. It won't even get opened. So you need to be unique when you're contacting people. Again, think about their brand. Think about the prospect's brand. 
Can you do something quirky? Can you just do a video? Um, can you actually go and meet with them face to face, which is obviously ideal um, if you can. But think outside the square when it comes to contacting sponsors with a marketing offer. Number seven is a big one. So most of the time, and I keep harping on it, is that people don't allocate enough time to researching this prospect. Again, this is the most critical component to being successful is that you can showcase that you have done your research. Again, but trying to be unique. Imagine having 500 same proposals hit your desk every week. However, maybe on your email body, it actually says to you, hey, sorry, actually says to the prospect, hey, Belinda, I noticed that Motivate is concentrating on X, Y, Z at the moment through your social media posts. And I've got an idea how I can help you increase your sales, your reach and blah, blah, blah. That is going to get my attention and make me open that proposal. So research, research, research. And again, when we think about motorsports and sponsorship, everybody kind of gets stuck on just we can only go to motorsport friends. No, have a look around at all the different categories and see the different types of sponsors um, everybody has on board. That's one of my favorite things on the weekend. I can watch any category of motorsports and I kind of jot down a whole list of different sponsors that are on board, all the vehicles, and to see you know, why are they sponsoring these people? What are they trying to get out of it? But more importantly, when you're trying to look for sponsors, think outside of motorsports. So think about your current skill sets. Can you play the piano? Can you cook? Do you love cooking? Um, so things like you could contact a pasta company. Um, you could do um, piano um, playing outside of this um, conference for one of your sponsors. And that's going to be more exciting than um, having corporate hospitality. Okay. Um, think about the hobbies and the other interests that you have external to motorsports. All of these is what's going to make those marketing opportunities feel exciting and for you to be able to easily identify um, what you can offer them. Get ready for the race. Do you feel one step closer to being the next superstar behind the wheel? MotivateTraining.com.au for more. M-O-T-I-V, the number eight, training.com.au. The green flag. Every episode gets you one step closer to the checkered flag. The Motorsport Coaching Podcast, getting you to the checkered flag faster.